It's Wednesday, April 21st, and the time for your Barbados Today morning news update. The Barbados Association of Medical Practitioners is on board with plans for visitors who have been vaccinated against COVID-19 to be fully quarantined if they pass through countries where COVID-19 variants are prevalent. The support comes on the heels of confirmation by Trinidadian health authorities that the highly transmissible Brazilian strain of COVID-19 had been detected there. It also comes ahead of Barbados' implementation of new protocols for visitors on May 8th. From May 8th, right, when the new travel code comes into effect, if somebody passes through a country with variants of concern, that they would be made to quarantine, even if they're fully vaccinated, they would be made to quarantine for the full time if they've passed through a country with variants of concern. So that's the measure that we have instituted in the new travel protocols to deal with people who are coming from areas where variants of concern are permanent. And so it says that the, there will be a list on the BGMI website which is updated frequently as to what countries those are that we're concerned about. And if you come from one of those countries, whether you're vaccinated or unvaccinated, you would be made to quarantine when you arrive. That was BAMP President Dr. Linda Williams, who also reiterated calls for variant testing to be done in Barbados as other countries in the region. I have made my concerns widely known about variants and the need for variant testing in Barbados. Um, how important it is, how it's important is to our tourism product. Um, especially to know about variants of concern. And now there's the Indian variant. We don't really know much about that, but it's in the UK. And if it's in the UK, it can potentially be here. Okay. And we don't know if, you know, how much protection the vaccines give. We don't know. There's so many unknowns. Plus, some tourism markets are saying that if, unless we are doing variant testing, that, you know, they wouldn't really want their people to come to us, and that's because, of course, our variant can develop anywhere. We can develop the Barbados variant, and it behoves us to know what is happening here on the ground as well. Now, we've been sending some to Carpa. Um, I don't think the second set, the results of those have been announced. Um, but, you know, whether or not we're sending them to birth on a regular basis, I am not sure. The fact of the matter is that we have to use all the resources we have as a country to get this done. The Barbados Secondary Teachers Union wants an urgent meeting with the Ministry of Education to discuss the readiness of school plants given the volcanic ash fall and COVID-19 cases. School is set to reopen for face-to-face -face classes on April 26. However, BSTU President Mary Redmond says teachers need word that it is safe to return to schools. We need answers, we need clarification, we need assurances, we need to know that the school environments are safe. We cannot operate in an environment, for example, where you have need of ventilation, to prevent the spread of COVID and at the same time, the need to close windows to prevent the effects of ash still in the environment. There's a contradiction there in terms of the implications for our health. And that is just one example of matters that we need to have clarified as to where the schools are at in terms of cleaning and where we are at in terms of COVID, where the country is at, because there's still a lot of, even though, as you know, there's still a lot of dust in the environment separate and apart from the cleaning that is going on in Buildings. Redmond tells Barbados Today the union requested at recent talks with the chief education officer another meeting this week with the Ministry of Health and the COVID-19 monitoring unit to answer many unanswered questions. Since we've written that letter, we now have news of two new clusters 
and there has been the impact of the ash related to the eruption of La Soufriere. And so we want to be in, an, in a position to find out exactly how those matters are being addressed and the potential impact for the reopening of school, because any reopening of school must take place in an environment that does not compromise the health and well-being of any users of the school compound, be they students, ancillary staff, or teachers. And so that meeting is to seek clarification and get responses to our concerns. We need to have a meeting with our membership, as we promised them, that such a meeting would take place before we re-enter school on a face-to-face -face level so that their concerns that they want to express through us would have been addressed. And now to developments in St. Vincent and Upper Grenadines. The community of Oia, which is located in the Red Zone, has suffered a devastating blow as a result of the eruption of the last Sufre volcano. More in this report from SVG TV. There is total destructive transformation of Oya, with a number of buildings destroyed, including churches and the entire village covered with several inches of volcanic ash. New beaches were also formed at a new waterfall developed from the destruction of the main bridge connecting Fancy to Oya. The riverbed of the Oya Big River has been totally transformed with these huge boulders coming from the mountain slope. Dale Medica, who stayed behind, heard when it all happened. It was like over about a thousand yards away. I heard the rumbling. But I didn't make it here because rain was coming. Yeah, this is a new riverfall in Oya. This was born on um, the 13th of April, 2001. Some areas in the community reeked of the scent of dead animals. This elderly resident, Grafton Caesar, is one of the men who did not evacuate. He said although they were able to save some animals, they could not save all. When the river comes down, sheep and goat and pigs wash into, if it, when you watch goat and sheep in, um, in, inside the water, down in the sea water right there. Just like a wharf, they don't, the real sheep and goat and dogs, because they have no shelter place to shelter. So um, in the river, they ha like have to cave with the, with the animal to go and shelter. But they don't know because they don't have um, you, you know, the opportunity like we human beings. So river take them and carry them away. Another resident known as Jumbi said at this time, Oya is inhabitable as there is a constant sandstorm. He said it will take a long time before Oya returns to anything close to normal. There's regional and international news after this short break. the regional scene, national hero and former Antigua and Barbuda Prime Minister Celeste Bird is recovering after having his lower leg amputated on Tuesday. According to this report from ABS News, Celeste had the surgery following a recommendation by his doctor after he had been hospitalized earlier this month with a toe infection. Because his daughter, Daniel Ann Bird, says he had remained under observation given his chronic condition, diabetes. She explains the infection progressed and an urgent decision was taken to perform the surgery. He is currently being observed post-surgery and we are satisfied with the reports and updates so far. He has been in good spirits for the most part and remained positive, calm and resolved going into the procedure this morning. We are immensely grateful 
and are all praying for a swift recovery with minimal discomfort. And finally, U.S. President Joe Biden has described Tuesday's conviction of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin in the murder of George Floyd as a giant step forward in the country's fight against systemic racism. As you saw in this trial from the fellow police officers who testified, most white men and women who wear the badge serve their communities honorably. But those few who fail to meet that standard must be held accountable, and they were today. One was. No one should be above the law. And today's verdict sends that message. But it's not enough. We can't stop here. In order to deliver real change and reform, we can and we must do more to reduce the likelihood that tragedy like this will ever happen to occur again. To ensure the black and brown people, or anyone, so they don't fear the interactions of law enforcement, that they don't have to wake up knowing that they can lose their very life in the course of just living their life. They don't have to worry about whether their sons or daughters will come home after a grocery store run, or just walking down the street or driving their car, or playing in the park, or just sleeping at home. And this takes acknowledging and confronting head on systemic racism and the racial disparities that exist in policing and in our criminal justice system more broadly. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.